Welcome to the Microsoft Partner Network podcast. Every week we bring in industry leaders and Microsoft partners to talk about the big ideas shaping business and technology today. In today's episode, we speak with Tom O'Reilly, GM of IoT Device Experience here at Microsoft, about how IoT is changing the market today. Hey, Tom. Really excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. If you can't tell, we have an Australian in the podcast studio today. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Love to hear about your, you lived in Singapore. Who are you a little bit and how, what are you working on here at Microsoft? Yeah, great. So I left Australia a long time ago. I hear my accent is leaving me, but maybe you guys are going to think differently. But <laughs> I left there about 16 years ago, moved to China um, and lived in a little place called Xiamen in China for about three or four years. Then I was 11 years in Singapore um, before I recently relocated here to the beautiful Pacific Northwest about nine months ago and uh, ha- had the opportunity to come to work with Microsoft to to be part of this huge change that's happening in the industry. Yeah. Can you talk talk to me a little bit about that? What What is going on exactly with IoT and how is it changing? I think you mentioned there's yeah. 22 billion devices by, you know, 2020. It's, right. w- what are you seeing? Yeah. So, I mean, you could argue that machine to machine or IoT has kind of been around for a while. Look, I'd say that machine to machine is a bit different. It's traditionally been a you know, old factory automation, you can think about it was a control system. There wasn't really a feedback loop. So IoT kind of really started gaining popularity when you started kind of taking old technology and making it new again by creating an experience around it. And, you know, what's what's really driven that is, look, hardware is becoming adaptable, mm-hmm. right? We're seeing that, um, you know, the, the types and proliferation of devices, sensors, and so on, are allowing you to connect and get information and change information to data, data to insights more and more, particularly as you've got this hyperscale uh, computing and, and analytics capability with the cloud. Right? Connectivity is becoming pervasive, so you can connect a lot of things to a lot of things. Yeah. Um, you know, Manufacturing is becoming state-of-the-art, so you can actually turn things around a lot faster. There's been this swell of re-engagement or reinvestment back in efficiencies gained by using IoT sort of technology. And as I said, this new uh, capability of analysis and taking actions and insights and so on is really driving these completely new business models that were never thought of before. And what are some of these business models? What exactly is the opportunity for partners to start thinking about? Yeah, so it's... You know, there's a big change in terms of, you know, how you think about taking what was a hardware device that potentially came with software and then transforming that into perhaps a piece of software that now actually comes with hardware. Yeah. Uh, it's this as a service model. It doesn't have to be, you know, it started off with infrastructure as a service. We look at PaaS as a service. We've got software as a service. But, you know, these business models are now completely transforming to being device as a service. It could be productivity as a service. Uh, And those might include multiple hardware devices. It could include multiple service contracts. It could include lots and lots of different things. But ultimately, the end user customer at the moment wants the outcome. Yeah. Right. They want to see that their success is tied to your success in terms of how you think about how these these models are actually charged for. Um, So... The opportunity for partners is really around building this ecosystem around them. You know, what we've seen is a major change in just how many partners are engaged in the solution to go and deliver it to an enterprise. Before it may have been three, maybe five. Mm -hmm. You know, that's doubling and tripling when you think of the number of ISVs, SIs, OEM product people, service contracts, et cetera, that are needed to go and bring these solutions together. One thing you were just telling me, you got back from San Jose, yeah, where you were with what two hundred different. Tell, tell me a little bit about what you were doing there. Yeah, so we ran a, a, a new uh, event for for Microsoft just this week in San Jose. Uh, we called it uh, IoT in Action with Microsoft, and it was a two part uh, two part. Day one was really around an ed- day of education, just level setting, like what does IoT actually mean to yeah. everybody. So we wanted to really try and, as I said, just just 
build up what is an IoT scenario. So we built the Franken fridge on stage. So we took a normal fridge, attached sensors to it through gateways, yeah. put on some facial recognition for it. We did machine learning on facial recognition. Awesome. Um, and we built a code level demo, massively popular. Yeah. Day two was a matchmaking event where we were trying to get these, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different partners. So we had everyone from OEMs, ODMs, SIs, ISVs, you know, Fortune 100 companies there. We had startups there and really trying to anchor around three major uh, verticals that we had that are, are focus areas for us at the moment. So there's one in retail, one in industrial automation, mm-hmm. and one in um, smart buildings. Mm-hmm. And what, what we're also aiming to do out of that is to find these points of solution aggregation. And what I mean by that is when it comes to uh, deploying an IoT scenario, a lot of them are not successful. And the reason they're not successful is that the, the, the enterprises that are trying to deploy them are trying to aggregate these solutions themselves. They're trying to bring in together the OEMs, the ISVs, the SIs, and some of that connectivity tissue wasn't there. Yeah. So we worked with, uh, with Arrow and with Avnet and with Ingram to help bring these groups together mm-hmm. so that they were actually able to start packaging up these offerings together with a couple of different ISVs, maybe three or four different OEMs, and they're putting some solutions to go to market with those now. And that's something that Microsoft is really wanting to, to try and encourage and be part of. Uh, there's a few things I heard in there. So one, you focused on three kind of verticals. Yes. I think we had talked about potentially six different verticals mm-hmm. that you yep. can think about. Um, what are the other three that we talked about? Sure. So we look at uh, security and surveillance. Yep. We also uh, look at healthcare, and then we also look at uh, energy, or uh, you know, and all the things associated with energy, oil, gas, green energy, and so on. So they're the major six uh, areas that we we look at. And even within those, we sort of start drilling in a little bit further. So around retail solutions, it's about heat maps. It's about, uh, you know, so understanding where in the store someone is. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's about smart shelving. It's about POS units, everything from self-checkout to mobile checkout units. Um, There's a lot of innovative uh, things happening in that space. Uh, And you find overlap in here as well. Right. So, you know, the security cameras that you're using in there to do loss prevention can be exactly the same cameras that you can use for facial recognition to start to start changing digital signage in the shop based on, you know, sort of approximate demographics of that person so they can get a much richer experience in the retail store. Uh, So we are seeing, you know, some of the cross pollination even between these solutions as well. It seems pretty messy. It, and it can be – what we were talking about is you can't do this alone. No. <laughs> but, I mean, you say messy, I say massive opportunity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, How big is that opportunity? Look, I like mean – trillion or so, pre- pretty big. Yeah, I mean, look, if you're talking <laughs> – you know, you'll see numbers ranging from like 22 billion up to 30 billion devices by 2020 or 2022. Yeah. You know, you'll see numbers thrown around like 1.3 trillion – like it's huge, right? Um, you know, lots of room for lots of different people. Um, but what you are seeing is the people that are being successful in this space are actually the ones that focus on cooperation mm-hmm. rather than ones that are focusing on competition. Yeah. And truly, what differentiates people in this space is really the customer service levels. That listening to what customers really want, they're the ones that really differentiate. You know, it's very easy to create a solution and then try and find a problem. Yeah. It's a lot harder but a lot more effective to go and find the opportunity and then build the solution around that. What are some things that partners can start doing to start figuring out what are the problems to start building a solution for? Yeah, so look, part of this is that we uh, we did this with down in, down in San Jose for the event and we started out the first half of the day literally brainstorming what are the opportunities or problems that your customers are asking you about mm-hmm. you know this is a this is trying to find uh, you know where these problems are and I'm going to tell you maybe a little bit of an odd story but a, but a, maybe a bit of a different one that kind of helps describe it so this is quite a famous story that was done by a bunch of designers and architects when they built the new quadrangle at UC Irvine mm-hmm. and they didn't put any paths in 
they literally put grass all the way up to the buildings. Mm -hmm. And what you've got to imagine is that over a year, there was literally millions of little sensors watching where people had to go, find their desire paths. And those millions of sensors were blades of grass. And quite literally, after a year, you could see the tracks that all the students were taking between all the different buildings. So at the end, they literally just paved over the top of the places where grass wasn't. Yeah. And you more or less had listened to what the customer, in this case the student, was saying on right. how they much prefer to get from building to building. So you know how partners can really start about this is like, really, how well do you know your customer? You know, I would say that you know, particularly as you think about how you address a market, really focus on, you know, we picked out those six verticals. It's become an expert in that space. Be able to speak the language of the customer that you're trying to serve and understand. Um, that's where we see the first couple of, of items start. Um, the other thing that I'd say is like anchor on a business model. Choose like what part of this are you going to be and then get the other partners that sometimes may have been your competitors even to come around you and work with you on, hey, what can you take to the market? I would say start small but start fast. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of the tenants that you heard come up around cloud computing are absolutely applicable in this space. This is, you know, you want to be able to, I wouldn't say start with a POC or a pilot. I, I would say start with your phase one deployment. And the reason why not the other two is it kind of has the feeling of it's a science experiment. Yeah. Right? But start with something that you can build, learn, iterate quickly, and just keep that flywheel going so that, you know, if you have a small amount of success, you can build off that, reinvest it, start in phase two, have some more savings or revenue benefits, et cetera, start on the next phase, stage three, and so on. Um, so there's some of the fast ways that we're seeing people going. IoT is, a, is as much about a state of mind as it is about a technology, right? And what I mean by that is that, you know, if you look at a lot of the benefits you get from IoT, it's really understanding the data that you get. It's being able to put that into amazing analytics and then being able to drive actions out of it, right? And it's not being a slave to the data. It's actually using data to break free, to be able to experiment rapidly, right? You want to you know, be able to have a look, make a small change. Did that work? Yes or no? If it didn't, that's okay. Fail forward, fail fast, fail quickly, you know, iterate, try again. Uh, and that's really a huge thing that, that IoT is able to bring is you can now instrument so much of this to really understand how your experiments are performing. Um, so one of the, one of the, my best experiences at uh, San Jose this week was on day one during lunchtime, Sort of walking around, and I saw a guy kind of sitting over on his own. So I went over to have a chat, and uh, he was a lawyer from Nigeria. He'd come all the way to the U.S. for this event, and you know, I, 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 I was sitting down. He was he, he looked a little bit distressed, and I'm like, you know, is everything okay? What's going on? He's <laughs> like, it's like my head's just exploding with all of these <laughs> ideas that I've got because there is so much of the technology that we're talking about that I'm trying to think, you know, how do we use this in Africa? Because, you know, the problems that he's trying to solve are very different to the ones that we were potentially looking at. And you sort of think, how do I adapt this technology? Yeah. This is, this is touching every part of the world at the moment when people are thinking about how do they connect, how do they, you know, turn these smart solutions out. Uh, you know, it's often an area that we, we, we don't think about as much as we could or should. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah. It really humanizes um, – what IoT can do and what we're all doing here with digital transformation. Yeah. Um, one of the verticals that you talked about, I'd love to hear an example of because I have a special interest in smart buildings yeah. living here in Seattle. Sure. Um, do you have any good examples? Yes, there's a, a you know, if you are here in Seattle, a lot of construction going on and, and one of the, the construction companies here, Skanska, uh, came to us with a, with a bit of a challenge and there's obviously a lot of environmental um, you know, issues that happen with construction or, or areas they have to monitor. So everything from noise to air quality to you know, just dust and pig, you know, particle size and so on. And they were doing this in a way where you'd, they'd literally have people walking around the buildings with different construction sites with different sensors. But often by the time that actually got back, analyzed the results, et cetera, they're already out of compliance. Yeah. And, you know, it was this kind of, re, you know, driving, classic driving with the, looking in the rearview mirror. So we're able to work with them to work with some of our ODM partners in China 
and come up with a specialized device, quite literally just for them, that was able to do real-time analytics and, and sense the environment that was around them. Wow. You know, that's a really good example of where you're finding a completely non-traditional business being a construction firm, being able to not only make use of but participate in the IoT opportunity. I love that example. One thing that I, I remember talking to, uh, with some of your team about was licensing a little bit. And when you're talking about that example, um, I'm just thinking if you're starting to build your businesses, some of that gets a little tricky, right? Yeah, it does. With the software and what you're using, um, do you have any any thoughts or advice or t- what's happening in that kind of area? Yeah, look, I mean, I mean, the licensing for the devices and so on themselves is actually still pretty simple. Yeah. And as an OEM, the best places that you can go and work with are with our big uh, distribution partners. Um, you know, here in the US, there's there's quite a few ranging from Arrow, Avnet, B Square, Advantech, Dell, uh, but we got lots of partners around the world, and you can you can quite easily find them. They're experts in helping you not only bring your device from concept to through POC into testing and into a reality, but also now figuring out how do you then create a connection for that device. We've got programs like, you know, certified for, for Azure. So, you know, mm-hmm. people can buy your device with confidence knowing that, hey, this will actually natively connect onto Azure for usage of IoT Hub or IoT Suite and so Got on. It. Um, so that's going to be the best source of information for yeah. the team that are building hardware. You know, for your ISV partners, it's about trying to find, hey, where does my software actually work best with what devices? Because the device is often, you know, some of it's disintermediated, but at the same time, it's often where the virtual and the physical worlds actually come to life right. and how you experience the technology or how you sense the environment to go and create these uh, these experiences. Well, thanks for being here, Tom. We really loved having you in the studio. No, look, thank you so much for having me. This is like such an exciting space and, you know, to have the opportunity to share some of our experiences is such a wonderful uh, opportunity. So thank you. Thanks for listening today and check out the podcast description for show notes. Be sure to subscribe and keep in touch with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at MS Partner.